on Wednesday, a strange thing happened to the Twitter account belonging to the US ambassador for Israel. And for a brief period, the name on the account seemed to include both Gaza and the West Bank, which are areas not currently part of Israel. And because this happened on the day that Joe Biden was inaugurated, people started to jump to conclusions and wonder if this represented some change of policy towards the Middle East. And because Joe Biden immediately revoked some of the changes that Donald Trump had made, such as the so-called Muslim ban, which uh, meant that Muslims from North Korea could no longer travel to the US, people were wondering, was Joe Biden about to reverse the decision to move the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? But he hasn't reversed that decision. And whoever made the decision to change the name of the Twitter account of the US ambassador to Israel has reversed that decision very quickly and the account is now back to normal. But it's interesting to explore why the inclusion of Gaza and the West Bank on such an account would be so objectionable and objectionable to whom. Now, Gaza is under complete control of the Hamas government in 2005, Israel pulled out of Gaza. They withdrew completely and removed 21 settlements. All the settlers that were living in Gaza were forcibly moved out and compensated for their loss, and they all went to live in the West Bank. Which brings us to the West Bank and whether or not that is part of Israel, whether or not parts of it may soon become part of Israel with the attempt to annex parts of the Jordan Valley and parts of the West Bank. So the whole region from river to sea, although not governed entirely by the Israeli government, certainly vast parts of it are occupied by the Israeli army, the West Bank, is under complete occupation. East Jerusalem, which is also designated to become part of a future Palestinian state, is very much part of the occupied territories. And Gaza, although no longer occupied, is certainly under siege and no one can come in or no one can go out without the permission of the Israeli government. So it, it might be fair to include Gaza and the West Bank in all communications, in all negotiations with the regime in Israel, the regime in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, whichever you like to call the capital, because it is that government that is entirely in control of the whole region, although there is a degree of autonomy in parts of the West Bank and in the fact that Hamas control the Gaza Strip.